Hi everybody and welcome again to Programming in Access 2013. We're, conti we're continuing our database section uh, and today we're going to be going over a bit more about relationships in our Access database. So let's get, uh, let's get started. Alright, this is where we left off last, where we have our three different tables um, all joined together. And uh, we have this situation here, this relationship which is called a one-to-many between our customers and our addresses. And this is a relationship of the ID field between our customer's ID field and customer ID field on the table one addresses. Okay, so these two tables are linked together in a one-to-many relationship, which essentially just means for every one customer, I may have many addresses. Okay, now, one quick little correction I want to make about my past video. I did make a little faux, t faux pas there. Uh, I said that because of the naming convention where I've given it customer underscore ID, that Access automatically understood this relationship I was trying to create. And that's actually not accurate. That happens with some other frameworks, like in PHP um, and some other different styles of frameworks where it actually recognizes and identifies these relationships based upon the way you name them. But unfortunately, Access doesn't do it that way. I believe this relationship that Access understood was because I made this a primary key, uh, and this field is not a primary key in the table one addresses table. And therefore, Access identified that since this is a primary key and this is not currently a primary key, that these two things must be related by having this as the primary and this is the foreign, what we call the foreign key. Okay. So foreign keys exist on the table that you're trying to tie into. Primary keys are obviously the unique identifier for that particular row of data in that table, which I'm going to get into in just a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> so you may have already realized that there's going to be some situations where your data is not always going to be organized in this one to many. Okay. And the way I'm going to set this up as an example is, let's say in my customers, which are customers for this particular instance are just basically businesses. But I'm going to have lots of contacts within a company. I may have, you know, four or five different people that I talk to within that particular company. You know, I may not just have one person that I talk to. I may have multiple people. So I'm going to create a contacts table, and I've already populated some data in here. And I'm also going to need a way to talk to these people. So I'm going to have a phone numbers table. And I've already made up these tables. I've already defined their definitions, their data types, etc., and I put them in here. And in case you don't know how to do that, I, I know I didn't really go over it too well. If you go and click on the Create tab here, this is where you cr you're basically going to go to create anything. Your tables, your queries, your forms, uh, all of this, and also your reports uh, are going to be designed by going up to the Create tab, then click on either Table Design, Query Design, Form Design, or Report Design. I personally don't even mess with any of the other options, the table here, or the wizards. Uh, I avoid the wizards like the plague. They can really cause you problems. They can, they can end up causing you more, costing you more time, taking out the things that Access automatically puts in. It's just better to start with a blank and using the designer uh, each time. So anyway, let's get back on track here. So how is this relationship going to work between phone numbers and contacts? Because there may be situations, and, and we're not dealing with just one particular customer. We have lots of different companies that we're planning on working with. And each different company is going to have a very different arrangement of phone numbers to contacts. Because let's say, for example, um, the whole company has one business line. They just have one phone number, okay, that you can reach all of those people by using that one phone number because that's the only one. There may not be extensions, or maybe if there are extensions, you don't really keep track of that. All you want is the main phone number to call. So there can be an instance where multiple contacts will have one phone number. But at the same time, let's say those same people that work there have their own individual cell phones. So now you have a contact which can be reached at the main phone number, but also has his, his or her own cell phone number. So how do you handle this relationship? How do you handle, there's multiple contacts, there's many contacts, and there are many phone numbers, 
and any arrangement of these two could happen. How do you solve that? Well, this is what's commonly called a many-to-many -many relationship. There are many phone numbers that relate to many different contacts. And the way you handle this is through a third table. Okay, And for con naming convention reasons, I like to put a little underscore between a you know, when I'm making up this third table, I use the convention of the primary table that's going to hold the, you know, the, the primary information of that particular contact, underscore, and then phone numbers here, which is the other bit of information that I'm going to be tying back into the contact. So I'm separating out the table names with an underscore. And you'll notice that the ID field here, if I follow the line, tracks up to phone number underscore ID. And then under table one contacts, tracks up to contact ID. So here we have this relationship of ID to phone number ID and table one contacts ID to contact ID. Now in this third table, I'm going to have, say, contact ID number one has phone number ID number one because we're going to keep track of our phone numbers in here, and I'll go ahead and open up the table. You'll see that ID for phone number one is, uh, for you know, here's the phone number, and the ID for that phone number is number one. And then phone number two, phone number 0002, has an ID of two. And phone number 0003 has an ID of three. Okay? Now, you may be wondering, what's this phone type ID? This is similar to how I had the addresses. I have a phone types here so that we can keep track of what type of phone this is. So we got office cell, and I'll just go ahead and make up fax, you know, because some people have a fax. And I'm going to give a sort order of three, and we'll see how that sort order plays in a little bit later. But just it's a good idea to know that this you kind of want to do this so that you have some sort of organization of which one of these should show first in your displaying. When we get into the form section, this will make a lot more sense, but uh, it, that we'll cover this in a little bit more detail when we get to the forms. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. Go back into our phone numbers. Okay, so we've got ID 1, phone number 0001 is a office number, 0002 is a cell phone number, 0003 is also a cell phone number, with 1, 2, 3 as their IDs. Okay. So let's go back out of this, and let's open up that table that I created here. And I've already put some data in here, and I'm going to show you here are the contacts. Customer, uh, or contact ID of one is me. Okay, I don't have an email, and neither does Sam here. But Sam is my coworker, and I don't know if you, if you can see this, but customer ID belongs to the customers table, we both work for Metro Properties, just so you know what that relationship is. We both work for Metro Properties, Sam and I. Uh, I have ID number one, contact ID one. Sam has contact ID number two. So when we look at the phone, the contacts underscore phone numbers table, contact ID number one, which is me, I have phone number one, right? Which, if I open this up, means you can reach me at 555-555-0001. And then, if I go back into here, you'll see contact ID 1, which is me again, can be reached at phone number ID number 2, which is ID number 2. Phone number is 555-555-002, which is my cell phone number. You see how that's starting to form together? Now we've got Sam. Sam is contact ID number 2. His phone number he can be reached at is also number one. Notice here's my contact for my number. This is a number you can reach me at. He has the same phone number that he can be reached at. So you can reach Sam at ID 1, which is 00001. Or you can also reach Sam at phone number ID number 3, which if we look at the phone numbers is, here's ID number 3, 00003. So here we have the arrangement of who can you reach at what number. You can reach me on phone number one, or you can reach me on phone number two. You can reach Sam on phone number one, or you can reach him on phone number three. Here's his cell phone. Here's my cell phone. Here's both of us have the same number at the office. 
See how unique that is? See how great that is? You can tie in all that information together just using these three little tables. Now the last thing I'm going to go over here uh, about this situation is something called primary key or composite key. I'm going to pop this open in design view here and I just want to show you real quick that we have these two fields both have the key next to them. Now this is what we call a composite key because I could certainly have put an ID, gave it an auto number, and uh, you know made that my key. I certainly could have done that. But that would allow for the possibility that a contact with the same phone number could be entered in twice. Now how often is that going to happen? Or should it even happen? I don't want that to happen, so I don't really want a unique number to automatically be given to every single row in my table. So I'm going to take this out. And instead, what I'm going to say is, I know that there will never be a time where a contact should have the same phone number twice in this table. It just should never happen. So if I, if I basically, I just want to go back over that real, real quick again, what I did here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I move the mouse up over here, drag until I get, until I'm highlighting both rows here click on primary key and that basically makes what we call a composite key. That's basically saying this and this together will always be unique. Always. Okay? And that's what a, that's what a key really needs to have. Everything needs to be unique about a primary key. So, I know that I will never have the same contact with the same phone number twice in this table. If I do, I want access to kick out an error. Okay? It should never happen. So that's what a composite key is. It's comprised of multiple multiple different fields to make up a unique way, uh, uh, something that we know is going to be unique about that particular piece of information. All right.